It's a bumper edition of NYMR TV this month. We see the finishing touches being added to the multi-million pound train of thought project in Pickering. The countdown to September's Heritage Diesel Gala has begun. The man in charge shows off some of the locos that will be running. Passengers travelling to Levisham and Go. The vicar arriving at Platform 1 is the station announcer. And best-selling author Mike Pallett meets some fans on the train and explains why the NYMR inspires him to write. Learning and Young Volunteer Support Officer Maria Vinells is helping NYMR steam into the 21st century this summer as the much-heralded Train of Thought project finally comes to fruition on Platform 2 at Pickering Station. The £1.6 million scheme includes a state-of-the-art learning centre which will cater for school, adult and community groups. The Train of Thought project is the way that the railway is going to move into the 21st century. The learning centre itself is a completely modern, well-equipped learning centre with an archive, with uh, climate control, all of the, the uh, conservation standard materials you'd expect to find in an archive. The visitor centre is a completely modern visitor centre in the style of, of any museum that you'll find. Meanwhile, contractors have been busy putting the finishing touches to the brand new visitor centre, which has special heritage and railway rooms. Uh, what we've got here are a number of panels explaining things about the history of the railway and about the railway as an operational railway. Uh, we've got a number of photos from the archive, we've got interactive for the children, uh, we've got these smoke box doors that you could open and see and smell and touch things from the railway. We've got um, an interactive topologic, topological map coming. Um, so it's a whole load of stuff and people are going to be really, really impressed by how modern it is and how different it is to everything else on the railway. Now fans of modern traction will enjoy the Heritage Diesel Gala in September. The man who's responsible for organising the event is Kev Yeoman. He took NYMR TV behind the scenes at Gromont to look at some of the locomotives taking part. This year, 2010 Diesel Gala, it's not to be missed. We've got visiting locomotives on top of our own heritage locomotives. It's the one weekend that we open the line and it's just diesel hauled right through for all the enthusiasts. We've got visiting locomotives coming in range of class 20, class 37, two class 31s and a class 45. And all work in an intensive timetable. It'll be good, one not to be missed. Still deep on the, uh, on the shed site here, we've got the Class 50, which is undergoing uh, some uh, restoration work at the moment. It's not obvious from this side, but at the far side of the locomotive, we've got the body, uh, body side of the cab cut out. I know the boys are involved in putting a new floor in at the far end as well. And some new guttering strips over on the far side. Currently uh, painted in uh, the uh, revised Network Southeast colour scheme. Uh, the Class 50s were primarily designed for express passenger use, originally on the London, London Midland region, uh, and then later on they transferred over onto the Western region uh, and Southern region, operating the fa fast expresses Waterloo down to Exeter. Um, we, here we are on board 5061, which is one of our class 24s that we have in the fleet. Uh, we have 5061 and 5032. 5061 is currently in traffic, 5032 is just waiting the major overhaul. This basically is a general purpose mixed traffic locomotive, uh, passenger and freight, equally at home on anything. Uh, original power classification of a Type 2. Um, so it's, uh, this one's also got a steam heat boiler fitted, so when it's cold weather, we have the ability to actually uh, heat the trains with the steam heat boiler that's on it. Because so, uh, all, well, all of our coaching stock is uh, heated by steam, not electric. Here we are on 31128, uh, Type 2 locomotive again, uh, BR Blue, one of my favourite colour schemes uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, liveries of the various diesels we've got. I think it suits it quite well. Uh, these run quite often from uh, Scarborough over to uh, Liverpool 
and uh, return and they also had a big influx in the northeastern area I remember as a, as a lad uh, running between uh, Middlesbrough around the coast on the uh, freight to the uh, potash mine that's not too far away from here Now I think most kids want to be engine drivers when they grow up at some stage in their lives but I have to admit that one job that I always fancied when I was young was being the station announcer. Passengers wishing to alight at Newtondale should inform the guard or ticket inspector. However, I'd have to join the queue at the NYMR because that job is already taken. And it's taken by a man who's well used to public speaking. Yes, because we have a number of trains running every day, it takes a little bit of time to make sure you're recording the right uh, train is going to the right destination. And uh, so it looks, takes a little time and we're usually working from the booking office at the same time. So customers are coming to the booking office and holding money in front of us as we're giving out the announcements. Well, I've had a good practice in public speaking. I don't know that I'm very good at it. Uh, being a vicar, I do a lot of talking and my wife says at times I do much too much. I think some of the congregation may have thought the same thing. <laughs> and finally in this episode, in a special on-train interview with NYMR TV, best-selling author Mike Pannett has revealed just how much the railway and the spectacular landscape surrounding the line have been a backdrop for his popular books about his life as a rural policeman. There's nothing Mike enjoys more than taking to the tracks for a day out, and when our cameras went with him, he was delighted to bump into two fans of his work, and of NYMR, of course, Enid and Danny Campbell from Kinross in Scotland. I've just found one of your books, yeah. I've been here about five times now. Yeah. The past six or seven years, so it's always nice to find something. That's what happens, people come back time and time oh, yeah. and time again. I think it's about the third time I've been on this railway. I think the railway and the landscape it's part, of, it's part of me as a child when I grew up and I think it, 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 as, it, as I've moved forward in my own life, I've, I've spent, as I say, this time in London, it's when I've gone away and spent such a long time away from North Yorkshire and then suddenly found myself back policing, but the heart and the soul of, of where I policed was, was the North Yorkshire Most Steam Railway and so it, it does figure, you know, very prominently and of course it's set in, you know, as a wildlife officer I was up in the moors all the time rooting around, so the backdrop every so often was the steam train shooting past, so you're constantly reminded of, of, of the steam train um, when I was working and my working life on duty as a, as a rural police officer up here. I think the books are basically 21st century crime fighting stories, but the balance of the books then comes with the characters, which are all true to life, so you've got the balance of crime fighting stories which are very real and up to date which occur in the rural communities um, but then balanced the humorous side of things um, come from the characters which are very much a part of the book so that's the sort of what the books are about character based 21st century policing stories in a rural community in rural North Yorkshire. And Mike Pennock's latest book Not On My Patch Lad is out now. For details of the Diesel Gala, check out our website. And next time on NYMR TV, see the impressive daily blowdown. Uh, we'll explain more on the next edition. Enjoy your ride with the NYMR.